Hi, this is Tommy from Carrera Casting. Today we're going to be covering best practices for your design from a design point of view. In this segment, we're going to be covering prongs and walls. What we have here is a ring that um, has come into us time and time again that looks good. However, there's a lot of engineering in this particular ring that is not right and it's going to hinder the building process and the casting process. First, let's start off by looking at the piece. It looks okay, it seems good. However, when you take a good look at it and start measuring, you'll notice that these prongs here, first of all, are way too long and way too thin. On the screen, on a CAD screen, everything looks nice and big. But that doesn't mean that it's built to be able to withstand the building process and especially not the casting process. So if we take a measurement on one of these prongs, we're going to zoom in on the prong here holding this particular stone. We're going to do a radius. And the radius on this stone is 0.225 or the diameter is not even a half a millimeter. Compared to the length of this prong, the length to width ratio is way off. That has a lot to do with how strong the prongs are and how they're going to withstand the casting and the building. When they come out of them solidscape machines, they have to be handled, they have to go through de-waxing. That in and of, of itself is going to break these prongs off. They're not going to make it. So when you have something that looks good this long, it doesn't mean that it's, that it's good for the process that you're putting it through. Again, if we measure the ones on the top here where the ring is, the diameter on this measures 0.425. That is way too small. Way too small. You'll notice that we have a bezel here setting the center stone. But the distance between this prong and this wall, it looks big enough, but it isn't. If we take a quick measurement, if we go from quad to, let's say, near, it's not even a tenth of a millimeter. What's going to happen when the investment goes in there and we de-wax the part in the, in the investment, from the investment, when we go to cast it, that part is going to be a sliver. It's going to break off and float around in there and cause porosity. So meaning that we have to go back, rebuild the part, and try casting it again. But the same problem is going to happen. What the problem here is that these prongs are way too straight. When a prong is built, it's always better that if you built the prong with a little bit of a draft, meaning instead of building it straight up like this, okay, it's always better if you go into your transfer into your solid tools, extrude tapered, that if it has a slight taper, let's flip this, it's going to be way stronger. You have to think about this in terms of the pyramids or even the Washington Monument, it's not straight, it's tapered. The reason for that, it gives geometric strength. So when this piece is in there, that triangulation, that drafting, which is in all engineering, gives it the strength necessary to withstand all the processes that it's going to go through. If you notice here, this is the same ring, but built in a different way. If we close the prongs heel, you'll notice that the prongs, one, are not that long. You don't have to have them capped like I do. That's just a preference. However, they are tapered. It's a slight taper, but that slight taper gives a lot of strength to these prongs that will withstand the casting process and the handling process once it comes out of the machines. Okay, so you'll see the difference right here between these prongs and these prongs right there. Another thing people have to take into account when doing a CAD file is thicknesses of walls. This looks great, but this wall here, it, where these prongs are, where this shank is, if you take a measurement of it, you'll notice it's not even a third of a millimeter. Not only is that going to chip off as it's being handled, it might even cast, but when you go to finish this, there will be no wall left. So don't be concerned that it looks good all the time, you have to take measurements. You have to take measurements and know the tolerance that is needed in order to go through the process. It's one thing to do things by hand, it's another thing to go through CAD, build in the solidscape machines and then cast it. There's things that you need to take into account, the filing, 
the heat that's going to be involved, and the process of casting, which puts a lot of pressures on these parts. In summary, we covered our height to width ratio of the prongs, the drafting or pyramiding of the prongs, and the tolerance between the prongs and the walls or between the prongs themselves. Hope you enjoyed this segment and stay with us. There are more best practice videos in CAD and 3D printing for jewelry manufacturing to come.